Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. Where are we? We're at the brewery. What are we doing? We're making a beer. Hello, Gemma. Get some work done. So, today, we're going to have a go at this. Can you read it yet? I apologise for making a blurry image. But there we are. I probably should turn the autofocus on. That helps, doesn't it? Absolutely does. Sorbet, IPA, mango. That's my crack at it. No oats, no oxidation. That's the plan. But we do have lactose in there to give us a estimated final gravity of 1018. We're going to go extra pale and wheat malt, each contributing uh, 57 and 10% respectively. Lactose contributing 3.4% of the total sugars, but not the fermentables, mind. And then we have 28.3% of the sugars coming from the mango puree, 6 litre edition, into a 50 litre batch, just over 12, 10%, maybe 12, something like that. 200 grams of mosaic dry hop, 160 grams of galaxy steep whirlpool for 30 minutes at 80 degrees. Opportunity as well for me to use up some of the leaf hops which I bought mistakenly last year. So we'll get stuck into those and get them used up. And all importantly, we're going to be fermenting this bad boy with verdant ale yeast. So all of the equipment is up to temperature, 78 degrees in the HLT, which is perfect. I've just cleaned all the caustic out of the kettle, that's perfectly fine. Just needs a quick rinse and we need to weigh out the grain for the mash. Let's do this. Would you just look at that? Sorry for the radio uh, intrusion. Interudian. We are well into the mash, in fact, we're approaching the ball off, there we go. The automatic mash recirculating thing in my bob is working perfectly. And we are uh, seven minutes away from knocking out into the boil kettle. Um, I have actually fitted a heat blanket, basically one of these. We just do this. So, Argos 40 watt um, blanket for your bed. Just as simple as that. 40 watts, 240 volts. So we'll just stuff that inside the jacket and it fits nicely you can't even tell you can't even tell so that's in there warming up that fairly sour because the temperature has dropped overnight oh it just disappears as we come to have a look at the screen there we go so it's it went in at 25 degrees overnight it's dropped down to 18.9 so I want to bump that back up to 22 23 and of course as soon as the yeast get moving they're going to bump up anyway, so that won't be needed then. But just that little bit of 40 watt of background heat should help with that rise. And it's those blankets that we've got in these big tanks. So one of the tanks, one of these tanks, has underfloor heating cable. So it's got 300 watts worth of uh, heating power, and we can raise the temperature on that one. One of these tanks has got two blankets and all the rest have just got one blanket and quite frankly it doesn't really do anything to heat them up it's just the biological activity from the yeast that allows you to free rise the temperatures so yeah it's just one of those things that uh, I shouldn't really need to heat the tanks to be fair I should catch them in time and let them free rise but these little boys over here because they don't have as much thermal mass as the 500 litre tanks they are susceptible for dropping in temperature before the yeast gets going so probably going to have to use these in the colder months of the year I think come summertime when we're playing around with different recipes 
they should be able to maintain their own temperatures. And I'm also waiting for a new pump for here. So as soon as that arrives today, we'll get that swapped out and get the cooling on. But I don't think we're gonna need any cooling for the time being. There we go. Anyway, let's get ready for this transfer. We've reached the boil. Timer set for 50 minutes. We're gonna drop a protoflock tablet in there and then we'll chill her down, get a whirlpool going. Five minutes before the end though, we've got an addition of 800 grams of lactose to sweeten her up on the back end. Hopefully we'll finish at 1018. Final gravity, who knows? Could land anywhere. The mash was around 68, 69C, so there should be a lot of residual sugars in there to help with that. So boil on the go. Next stage hoppage. I've got some caustic in the firm Zilla. That's just having a little stand with some cleaner in there. Then we'll give it a rinse with water. Pop a little bit of acid in there to sanitize it. And then she'll be ready to fill up. And I'm still waiting on the pump to arrive to uh, put into the chiller. So I've taken the product lines out, don't need them. Taking up space that's probably going to be needed for the pump. Just tidied the wiring up a little bit. I say tidied up, it's quite messy still. But uh, got rid of a few chocolate blocks and put some of these Wago connectors in. I prefer them these days. And if we have a look in the sink, then this, uh, this is, or these are, the product coils that came out. So four product coils, you can see how they're spiralled up to sit neatly inside the cooler. All of varying lengths of course, giving you different temperatures, ultimately for the product we push through them. But within a degree or so, I would have thought they're still quite um, consistent looking at that one that must be the external coil that's got two on it that'll be the smallest mid-size and two running around the outside because it's got the furthest to go so I wonder if they are massively different in length probably not but I'll probably just clean these out stash them upstairs with the rest that I've got they come in handy I need a little bit of stainless steel pipe or something like that so the alarm's gone off. I definitely want to catch this on camera because I'm gonna be adding 800 grams of dextrose. And there's a real potential that it can just boil over. So here's the dextrose. Let's just give her a little sprinkle in first and see what effect she has. Not dextrose, lactose in nugget. Well, that seems to go in relatively simple. A bit more. I don't want to just chuck the whole clump in in case it solidifies and sinks to the bottom of the tank. That would be a mistake. So far, so good. Seems to be dispersing quite nicely. Dissolving really well, actually. This is uh, going nicely. Right, a couple of minutes we'll add a protoflock tablet and and 10 minutes after that, we'll start to chill her down. Well, that was easier than I thought. Let's get some hoppage and put it in the boil kettle. Hoppage, ladies and gentlemen. Hoppage. You don't very often see me using big old big old leaf hops. Oh, that smells good. But today we are. Get them used up. Turn that pump back up. 
oil pump. The plate chiller has already taken us down to 76.5 degrees. It's overshot a little bit. So we'll just get this mixed in. We'll set a timer for half an hour. And hopefully in that time, a lot of the trouble have settled out and we can transfer straight in to the old rounder. The transfer is in progress. You may be able to see inside the old rounder. And uh, it's not going as fast as I'd like. Any ideas why? Anybody recognize this piece of equipment here? Yeah, this is the stainless steel filter that should be in the boil kettle attached to the back of this takeoff valve. And somebody forgot to install it. Fortunately, and this is a strange one, we are using leaf hops so they can allow for a little bit of a filter to be created inside the kettle. So we are managing to flow off, albeit slower than we would like. What a plonker. Cooling water's down to a trickle, therefore the transfer must be down to a trickle. But we've pretty much made it. It didn't take that long actually, about 25 minutes. So I can live with that. We've managed to achieve the 50 mark and beyond. So I'm just pushing on now. We'll grab a little bit extra if we can maybe up to 55 litres hopefully and that will be about on the money I'm yet to take a gravity reading though so I might just scoop a little bit out of the pipework when the transfer is finished Brew day's finished boys and girls Brew day's finished I'm just tidying up because I've just been sat here um, being interviewed for a podcast by a chap called Mark from Silver Fox Distillery. You can find them on Facebook. I'm waiting for him to send me a link and maybe I'll be able to leave it in the description uh, for his vlog and website. So if you're interested in what I've just been talking about, check him out. Silver Fox Distillery from Canada, no less. But yeah, it was a real nice chat. Right, day's done. The day is done. Let's just take you off the tripod, have a walk around. We have a temp look. Beautiful. So we've got the mango in there, and we've got obviously the sour in there. We just throw this bit of rubbish away. There we go. So I've opened the verdant yeast, we pitched the yeast. Here we go, it's sealed back up again now, so we managed to get a 500 gram bag of it from Murphy's of Nottingham. And we've also sealed up the Philly Sour. 50 grams I weighed out of both. And now we've got the Kavir Gale Yeast, the Voss. Do I have a play with that tomorrow, boys and girls? I kind of think I should. What do you think? Answers on a postcard. So, there we have it. That is that. I think I'm just going to put this stuff away now. Set the tank to come on again in the morning. Make sure I put that thing in. Oh, I can't believe I forgot that. And we'll be back for another episode of Pilot Kit Shenanigans in the Brew Shed with Harold. Oh, yes. We'll see you on the next one, boys and girls. I thank you very much for watching.